everybody, it's Deb from d, d Art Gallery. Hope you're all doing well today. Today I have a 12 by 16 inch gallery wrapped canvas. I'm going to do a dirty flip cup, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, I watched Heather Mader, that's M-A-D-E-R, Heather Mader Art. And also she did a collab with um, Heartfelt Artistry. And um, I will list the links for those two channels in the description. And what they did on their collab is they, they did a flip cup, but then they put a second layer on top. And it's called the cupping technique, where they actually used the cup to enhance their painting. And they did um, some balloon rolls and balloon uh, kisses and things like that. So I'm going to give it a try today, all new to me, first first try here. Let's go over my paints. I was uh, excited to get some new metallic paints, Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents. The first one I'm using is the Metallic White Pearl. Very, very pretty uh, color. And I'm not sure if you can see the shine, but I have put it around the outside. Uh, of my canvas here to help the paint move. My second paint is Deco Art Metallic Berry. My third paint is Deco Art Metallic Obsidian. I used the obsidian in the last pour that I did. It's a nice deep gray color. And I got a new part, new paint, excuse me, Deco Art Metallic um, deep sapphire very pretty blue very very nice and my next color is the um, rust-oleum metallics i'm trying out the glacier blue very pretty blue color and my last color is i took the uh, rust-oleum metallic uh white pearl and I mixed it a little bit with some Arteza Lemon Yellow. And I will show you the consistency on that. I'm going to be using the Obsidian and this Pale Pale Yellow as my second coat. And the paint's a little bit thicker. And I'm going to go over pouring medium here because it is different. And again, I would refer you back to Heather Mater and Heartfelt Artistry. The pouring medium is, um, let's see here, got to look at my notes here. Uh, six ounces of Floetrol, three ounces of Mod Podge, and one ounce of GAC 800. So I mixed that up, that equaled like 10 ounces. So what I did is I put half the pouring medium and half the paint. So again, consistency, no silicone added, a little bit thicker. And I think that you need that GAC 800 for this recipe so you don't get cracking or crazing with using the Mod Podge. It is, it is a thicker um, medium to use. So let's get started. And my doggy is with me again today, so if you hear her snoring, she's right under my table. Let's get started with uh, my paints here. Like I said, this sapphire is just a really beautiful color. And this is a new technique, this cupping technique. I really do like these Rust-Oleum paints. I've used some other colors before. And the lady's name on Heartfelt Artistry is Lam, L-A-M. 
And someone did ask her the question, which Mod Podge do you use? Do you use the gloss or the matte? And I think her answer was, um, she's used both, but um, she, I think she said the matte, the matte Mod Podge was a little bit cheaper. So that's the one that she usually uses. So, but it's worth it going to her channel and to um, Heather's channel for their collab. It was very enjoyable watching both of them. And I also had a subscriber ask me um, if I would be willing to just start from basics and do some basic pouring and mixing paints and that sort of thing for beginner beginners. And I'm more than willing to do that. And if you would like me to do something like that, could you leave me a comment? Because I can definitely go over how I mix my paints and to start out with some basic pores that are easier for beginners. So just drop me a comment if you would like to see that. I watch a lot, a lot of artists and I've learned a great deal on pouring and different, different techniques. But it is, some of the pours are more difficult and you don't want to start right out doing those. Until you figure out how paint moves together and what consistencies you need for different types of pours and that type of information. I'll finish up with my white here. And like I said, my second coat that I'm going to lay down is the pale, pale yellow and that uh, uh, obsidian. Okay. Just going to flip it. And I'm just going to slowly let the paint out here. More or less burp the paint. And I will save this cup. I'm going to do a little bit of torching before I start tipping it. And I do have some cells coming up. tipping it here. And hopefully you can see most of my tipping. Going to get it down to this corner. A 
and get it down to this corner. And I can tell by the way the paint is moving, I don't have a whole lot of extra paint on here right now, which is okay since I'm going to be putting another layer on. And I'll get it down to this corner to cover. It's moving very slow. Okay, looks like I got that corner covered too. So I'm just gonna check my sides here real quick. Make sure that they're covered up. And then I think I will do a torch here before I start laying down another layer. And I'm not going to layer and cover the whole painting. I think when Heather did it, she did cover her whole painting, and I'm not sure about Lamb if she um, covered her whole painting again. She may have covered most of it. But this is all experimental to me. Okay. Now I'm going to just lay down this pale yellow. And my obsidian. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of tip here. And it looks like I did cover quite a bit of that canvas. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is use, use a cup and I'm going to try and bring up the underneath colors, my, the colors I laid down first, up through that obsidian and that yellow. And I'm just going to take a little paper cup here and just work with it. Just see what kind of designs I'm going to get. And when Lam did hers, she cleaned off her cup in between. And you do get down to the canvas, but it, it will fill back in. And you can make 
all kinds of designs with your cup. Just It takes practice, which I have not really had a lot of time to do. You can just see how this is adding such a different dimension to this painting. It's just a lot of fun. you lay the cup down like that it just gives you a different kind of look on there and I do keep cleaning off my the rim of my cup after each time I do it and now I'm going to take a smaller cup just a little small plastic cup and see what kind of effects that gives. I guess you wouldn't want to play with it too too much because you could you could get mud or a brownish color You can just see how I'm bringing up that that paint from underneath. Just going to do a few more here. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is give it a quick torch. And I may tilt it a little bit. There is quite a bit of paint on here.
just tilt a little bit off. And I'm trying to pay attention to the composition as I am tilting here. Okay, I'm just going to take a look at it now. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to torch it again, and then I'm going to let it sit for a while, and then I'm going to come back and do some balloon, some balloon kisses on it. So... I will pause the video and we'll give it some time and then I'll come back when I'm ready to do those balloon kisses. everybody it's Deb I'm back um, the painting has been sitting here about 45 minutes and I think what I'm going to do is try and do some balloon kisses to see if we can bring up some of the colors from underneath so let's just see what we have here you can just see how it's adding to this painting So very pretty. Still a little wet, but see what kind of little balloon kisses we can add here. And I think if I were to do this again, I would put less, less of the obsidian. I think I overdid it a little bit with that, that gray color. But the blue is very pretty. I like the blue and the, uh, the pale yellow combination here. I just thought you would like to see how balloon kisses just add that extra dimension to a painting. And you can actually, if you have a dark area, you can actually take your balloon after you dip it in the light area and dip it in the dark area and carry some of that paint over. And I wipe my balloon off after every time I, I dip it, unless I do want to carry a color over. Oh, very pretty up in here. Very pretty what's coming up here. Yeah. 
Again, this was a 12 by 16 gallery wrapped canvas where I did the cup technique, which is a new technique. And if you get a chance, check out Heather Mater and Creative, creative Artistry. No, it's, I'm sorry, it's Heartfelt. Heartfelt Artistry. Yes, Heartfelt Artistry with Lamb. And uh, Lamb is really the one that started this technique. And her paintings are beautiful, as are Heather's. And again, I will put their channel locations in the description. I really like what I'm bringing up here. Very pretty. Ooh, the turquoisey color. Very pretty. And I do have a very small balloon. I'll give that a try too. See if I can bring something up with that. Oops, it's awful slippery though. Okay. And I will give it another torch and then get you down for a close-up. You can let me know what you think. And there was one thing I wanted to mention. My very first video I ever did, it was video number one. This is for beginning artists. I go through uh, everything you need to get started with uh, pour painting, as far as materials and paints and things to have on hand to get started. So if you get a chance and you are a beginner, it would be worth it for you to go and, and check out my video number one, give you a little heads up. So let's get you down for a close up. I hope that you enjoyed this process with me here. And this is the upper left-hand corner. Really pretty colors here. That turquoise is so pretty in there. It's actually called glacier blue again. And in here, so pretty. Take you up the middle. And over to the right, this is the upper right-hand corner. And down to the bottom. So let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it. Sharing it is really important and it really helps me out. Make sure you ring the bell and choose all so you know the next time I do post a new video. Subscribe if you haven't. That would be great. And uh, until next time, take care, everybody. Bye for now.